Chemistry, and you are watching Cam Science. In this video, we will solve IGCSE Chemistry Paper 62 of the October November series, and the code of the component is 0620. Along with solving the paper, we will also see what are the important tips to solve paper 6 in general. So let's start with question 1 and along with solving the paper we'll keep on seeing the important points to be taken care of in general for paper solving paper 6. So let's start here the first question says a mixture of three colored compounds are separated using the apparatus shown in the diagram and here is a diagram. Give the name of the item of the apparatus labeled A. Now A is the label here to the outer apparatus. Now the outer apparatus is a beaker. It's a big beaker in which the chromatography process is going on. So the A labeled apparatus is beaker. One drop of the mixture of colored compound was placed on the paper and some solvent was poured into A. On the diagram draw a spot to show where the drop of the mixture of colored compounds should be placed on the paper at the start of the experiment. Now here it says draw a dot to drop a mixture of colored compounds which is to be separated. Now the mixture of the colored compound has to be on the baseline which is already labeled here. So baseline draw a dot to show it. Let's go ahead with the next part of the question which says a line draw a line to show the level of the solvent A at the start of the experiment. Now to what level are we going to fill up the solvent in the beaker. So the solvent has to be below the baseline. So I'm drawing a level below the baseline to draw the level of the solvent. Let's go ahead here it says name an item of the apparatus that should be used to place a drop of the mixture of colored compound onto the paper. So what apparatus will use to put a drop? So to put a drop we will use either dropping pipette dropping pipette should be used or even you can use a capillary but here I'm writing dropping pipette state when the paper should be removed from the solvent A now if we have started chromatography when should we stop it that is the question here so when the level of the solvent uh, I can add here when the level of the solvent reaches near the top of the paper near the top of the paper near the top of the paper that is the main part name this method of separation of colored compounds now what is the method of separation it is chromatography you can even specify that it is paper chromatography I am just writing chromatography that is also acceptable here. So paper chromatography is the process here. Now here is a big process where a student investigated the temperature change when two different aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide solution G and solution H reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid. Now what is the question here is that there are two solutions of sodium hydroxide. Solution G is also sodium hydroxide and solution H is also sodium hydroxide and both of them are turn wise reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid and then it is going to create a temperature change. So a student in, is investigating what is the change in the temperature with the two different solutions. So here are the two experiments which were done. Experiment 1 is here. Steps of both the experiments are shown here. You can always pause the video and read all these steps which I am not doing here. So let's go ahead with the next part of the question where here we are given the thermometer readings. The Use the thermometer diagrams to complete the table here. So let's start with zero volume of hydrochloric acid means the initial temperature of the solution G. Initial temperature of the solution G we can see here it is 21 degrees Celsius. Now if we write only 21 that is also fine. 
so the temperature change is zero now at five the temperature is 24 degrees celsius so if we check the temperature change between the two it's three degrees celsius so for the 10th minute it is 26 Point five. Now, don't forget writing 26.5 is also important. Okay, now as we have seen that here the readings can be in decimal also. So, consider writing decimal at the other two readings also. So, we should add 24.0 and 21.0 also. So, now for this the temperature change. Now, here they have seen temperature change in the start. So, for the starting reading we have to calculate the temperature change. So, temperature change between the first and the second reading is 5.5. The next reading at 15th minute, 15th minute is 28 here we can see it is 28 degrees Celsius and so the temperature change is 7 degrees let's see of the other part also so that we can cal com complete both the tables together here the initial temperature is 22 degrees celsius but as i said we need to add the decimal place also so it is 22.5 next is 25.0 and so the temperature change here should be 3.0 degrees celsius so here also i'm adding the decimal places which is important Next reading here is a 27.5. You can see here the difference is between 27 and 28. So I should write 27.5 and so the difference is 5.5. The, here the next reading is we can read it is 28. 28.0 and so the difference is 6.0 degrees celsius let's go ahead with the next part of the table for the 20th reading after 20 20 centimeter cube of hcl is added the next reading is here is uh, you can say it's 29.0 i can make out here it's exactly on 29 so 29.0 and so the difference is 8.0 next on 25 centimeter cube of hcl here we have the reduction in the temperature which is 28.5 yeah because here the line is between 28 and 29 and so the difference here again reduces by 5 and so it is 7.5 the next reading is 28.0 again and so the difference has again reduced to 7.0 again if we go ahead next again is 27.5 again so now the last difference is 6.5 5. Similarly, if we go on this part again, it is in the middle. So it is 27.5, and so the difference uh, should be 5.5. The next reading is 27.0, and so the difference is 5.0. The next reading again here is in between. So it is 26.5 and so the difference is 4.5. And again the last reading is 26.0 and so the difference is 4.0. So here is our complete table. Completed table with the reading thermometer. Now, what is the main part here is that we should write the uh, degrees, the temperature in decimal place to one decimal place. Why? Because our thermometer is showing it to one decimal place. Let's go ahead with the next part here. It says that complete a suitable scale on y-axis and plot the results for the experiments 1 and 2 on the grid 
ट्रो टू स्मूथ लाइन ग्राफ बोथ कर्व मस्ट स्टार्ट एट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो क्लियरली लेबल योर लाइन सो वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज इज एम पोजिंग माई वीडियो एंड आई एम ड्रॉइंग अ कर्व एंड द प्लॉटिंग द पॉइंट सो यू ऑल्सो कैन पोज एंड जस्ट वेट आई एल फिनिश इट विद इन फ्यू सेकेंड्स सो हियर आर द टू सेट्स ऑफ पॉइंट्स विच आर प्लॉटेड फॉर टू डिफरेंट एक्सपेरिमेंट्स इन टू डिफरेंट कलर्स बट हियर यू कैन सी दैट द फर्स्ट टू पॉइंट्स आर अ सेम फॉर बोथ द एक्सपेरिमेंट्स नाउ हियर वी आर सपोज टू ड्रॉ टू स्मूथ लाइन ग्राफ्स एंड बोथ द कर्व शार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सो लेट मी ट्राई ड्रॉइंग अ कर्व बट एज आई एम ड्रॉइंग इट ऑन अ स्क्रीन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू हैव इट ऑन स्मूथ बट यू कैन डेफिनेटली ट्राई इट ऑन अ पेपर विद अ स्मूथ कर्व so here are my two curves and we are supposed to label it separately so here is my experiment 1 and the second curve is experiment 2 this is how we are supposed to label now let's go ahead with the next part uh the next part here is that from your graph deduce the temperature change obtained when total volume of 13 degrees centimeter cube of dilute hydrochloric is added in experiment One show clearly on grid how you mark worked out your answer. So for thirteen centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid, we are supposed to find out the temperature change. Now at thirteen centimeter cube here, you can see that I have thirteen centimeter cube. I have uh, drawn a dotted line to find out the temperature change here, which is six point five. You can see, or I would exactly say it is six point. Four five. So let's go ahead with this answer. So the temperature change is six point four five degrees Celsius. Now here it carries two marks. So for two marks, you should understand one is for the correct answer and the second mark is for showing your worked out. So on the grid, the dotted line which we have drawn that is necessary to be shown here. Okay so next question says explain why the temperature change decreases towards end of each experiment and the only reason for this is that the reaction is completed the reaction has completed you can also say that the hydrochloric acid is now in excess because the reaction has completed so adding more of hydrochloric acid is not going to make a temperature change in fact the heat gets spread it out through the solution so the temperature decreases here so one sentence we can write the reaction has completed explain what a conclusion about the concentration of solution g and solution h can be made from the results of experiment 1 and 2 now if you go back and look at the grid we can see that the temperature change in experiment 1 with the solution g was greater so from that we can conclude that solution g was more concentrated solution g is more concentrated if the concentration is more the temperature change and the reaction will be more exothermic so is more concentrated sorry concentrated here and we need to explain why so we uh, so we need to write explain that the temperature change the temperature change in experiment 1 the temperature change in experiment 1 in experiment 1 is greater in experiment 1 is greater and that is the reason that the solution g is more concentrated that's what we can conclude from our readings and from our graph next sub question is that explain how the results obtained would be different if a polystyrene cup is used instead of a beaker here we have used a beaker but if we use a polystyrene cup now polystyrene cup is an insulator so because of that what is going to happen is the temperature change would be greater because the heat loss will be less and so how the results would be different we will say that the temperature change the temperature change is greater should be greater i would write the should be greater because heat loss should be less 
heat loss should be less as polystyrene cup polystyrene cup is an insulator polystyrene cup is an insulator so heat loss will be less and so the temperature change measured will be greater okay give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a burette rather than a measuring cylinder to add dilute hydrochloric acid to solution g and solution h here we had used burette so what we are supposed to find out is given advantage and disadvantage of using a burette rather than using a measuring cylinder so the one advantage is that the burette reading is more accurate so we'll write burette is more accurate compared to measuring cylinder now what's the disadvantage disadvantage is that the process will become very slower so the process goes slower with burette that's the only disadvantage otherwise it's more advantages to use burette because of the accuracy now let's go ahead with the next question question three where it's an qualitative analysis question so here it says solid i and solid j were analyzed tests were done on each substance now the test one says now understand there are two solids i and j now the test were done on each solid the dilute uh, this this tests are about solid i so solid i test one says dilute hydrochloric acid was added to boiling tube containing solid i and the observation was that effervescence was seen the solid dissolves to form a colorless solution any gas produced was tested and the gas turned lime water milky now the next test was a flame test flame test was carried out on the solution formed in test 1 and a red flame was seen now from this we are supposed to identify the gas made in test 1 now if the test 1 gas produced effervescence with the acid obviously if and uh, the gas produced turned lime water milky the gas should be carbon dioxide so here we can write carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the gas produced which turns lime water milky okay next also remember the flame test here the flame test was the red flame now if you need to remember that the red red flame is produced by which element the element which produces red flame red flame is lithium so if you talk about solid i then the cation should be lithium ion and if the carbon dioxide is produced with the acid the anion should be carbonate so here the lithium carbonate formula will be this so what is solid i either we can write the formula li2o3 or we can write in words that it is lithium carbonate lithium carbonate is the solid i so here is one identification of the solid i let's go ahead with the next solid j solid j is ha, ha, okay it's given solid j is aluminium chloride solid j was dissolved in water to form solution j and the solution j was divided into four approximately equal portions so aqueous sodium hydroxide was added drop wise and then in excess to the first portion of the solution j now if you are talking about aqueous sodium hydroxide that is the test for cation in our compound the cation is aluminium which produces white precipitates initially you need to write the full uh, uh, word precipitate which i am writing in short because of the short of time here and on adding excess of sodium hydroxide to the first portion then according to the test aluminium white precipitate should dissolve so here white precipitate dissolves in excess dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide that should be the answer or the observation with solid j now aqueous ammonia was added drop wise now we are adding ammonia 
then in excess to the second portion of the solution J again with ammonia also it's going to produce white precipitates white precipitates I'm, this time I'm writing the whole word precipitates which you should also write now white precipitates is produced but with ammonia the solubility with the excess changes here and so the we will write on adding excess the precipitates remains or you can say the precipitates does not dissolve that is the observation for aluminium with excess ammonia if we go ahead with the next part it says about one centimeter depth of dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added to the third portion of solution J. Now barium nitrate is a test of sulfate ion SO4 2 minus ion. Are we having sulfate in our compound? No, it's chloride which is present in our compound. So therefore this test should not give any results. So we can write no change or no precipitates no change we can write here okay the next says about one centimeter depth of dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous silver nitrate were added to the fourth portion now we have aluminium chloride chloride gives the test with silver nitrate and that is white precipitates white precipitates are observed with the chloride ion with silver nitrate as a reagent so in this question we have written the test observations for both aluminium as a cation and chloride as an anion so here are question three done now let's go ahead with the question four question four says now you can see that questions four last question four carries six marks and you are given enough space to write the answer but let me go ahead with the question here first where it says the hydrogels are powders that absorbs water to form hydrated solids hydrogels and the hydrated solids formed are insoluble in water okay plan an investigation to find which hydrogel hydrogel a or hydrogel b is able to absorb the greater mass of water you are provided with the samples of hydrogel a hydrogel b water and common laboratory apparatus now this is the question where you are supposed to plan an experiment if you want to learn planning an experiment in detail i have in another video which explains you in detail what points to take care and what not go ahead on the main page of my channel and look at the playlist of the exams of IGCSE there you will find important exam tips for question 6 and important tips in a separate video for planning an experiment like this so I'll just explain you this particular question that how to plan this question here now what are you provided you're provided with hydrogel A and hydrogel B and you're supposed to plan what greater mass of water is absorbed by which gel so if you are talking about a mass obviously we need to measure the mass measurement of mass is necessary okay what are you going to measure the mass of you're going to measure the mass of hydrogel a and hydrogel b after it absorbs the water now to plan an experiment fairly to make the test fair there should be some factors which should be kept constant so what are the things factors you will keep constant to make the variables uh, specific for planning and fair experiment so what you will keep same is the mass of both the gel same mass of both the hydrogels same so what are we going to start is with uh, weigh the mass of hydrogel weigh the mass of hydrogel a we are starting with one of the hydrogel a only weigh the mass of hydrogel a um, uh, add it in beaker add it in beaker and if we are talking about the mass of the water absorbed we are supposed to add excess of water to find out the uh, exact mass the uh, mass of water absorbed so add it in beaker 
add excess of water excess of water to the gel to the gel in the beaker so that is what you are supposed to do first wait for some time wait for some time for water to get absorbed so that's why we are waiting for some time wait for some time then what are we supposed to do is filter the gel filter the hydrogel filter the hydrogel why because if we have added excess of water we are supposed to remove out that water okay so once we have filtered the excess water is removed now reweigh the reweigh the gel hydrogel a reweigh the hydrogel a now the mass of water absorbed mass of water absorbed how are we going to find that mass of water absorbed by the hydrogel a that can be found out by the mass after the uh, experiment and the initial mass so mass of hydrated hydrogel hydrated hydrogel that we can write hydro i'm i'm, I'm subtracting it uh, writing rewriting it here mass of hydrogel a minus initial mass of initial mass of initial mass of hydrogel a that is how we will get the mass of the water absorbed now what are we going to do is repeat the experiment repeat the process or the experiment you can say both repeat the experiment with the now be specific here with the same mass of hydrogel b now this is very important to make the uh, experiment fair we need to use both the mass same that is mass of hydrogel a and hydrogel b should be same so repeat the experiment with the same mass of hydrogel b and the hydrogel the hydrogel which shows greater increase in mass the hydrogel which shows greater increase greater increase in mass greater increase in mass has absorbed has absorbed greater mass of water greater mass of water so that is how we have planned our experiment and we have got the result so what is important here is first you find out which factor are you going to measure what are you going to keep same and at the end draw the conclusion writing conclusion is also equal important because that also carries at least one mark so how did you draw the conclusion drawing conclusion is how did we found out the mass of the water absorbed that is by subtracting the mass of uh, initial hydrogel mass and the mass of hydrogel after the experiment so that's how we found out the change in the mass of the water absorbed and that's how we concluded so conclusion is also equally important so here we have solved the whole of winter 22 paper 62 of igcse chemistry and i hope along with the solving whatever points which we have discussed is going to help you a lot in solving the other remaining paper 6 anytime